Fucking mosquitoes. Good evening. We are in Fischbecke Heide, just outside of Hamburg, in Germany, North Germany. And we are trying to create dynamic images in this video in very dull conditions. All starts right now. Let's go. We set up the first composition here in uh, these fields of heather. That's what all the purple is that you're seeing. And that was pretty good drone footage to give you a sense of, uh, of the scale of this environment. It's kind of like a, a valley, the, uh, the fish hecka bida, fish bida hecka, fish becca haida. My German is coming along two years later. Okay, so yeah, Fischbecke Heide is, uh, is just outside of Hamburg. Obviously, it's this nice kind of like open park area. And for about a month and a little bit every year, the heather blooms and you get this incredible purple color. And in good light, it looks absolutely phenomenal. But right now we're dealing with um, very dull conditions. It's about an hour before sunset and uh, the light hasn't changed since we arrived and I don't expect it to. I just expect to get it you know, progressively darker. So um, we have to get creative. And the first shot here uh, you just seen on the back of the camera is um, you've got this one like lone birch tree and it's surrounded by heather, which is really nice. And I'm getting a little bit of separation from the background to the subject. And it's enough that the background is darker. And that is what will allow me in post to really pump, pump, punch the contrast between the, uh, the birch subject here, the smaller tree, which is very uh, light in color, as well as the heather that's in the foreground, also very light in color, compared to the background, which is much darker. So you can really emphasize that contrast and make your subject pop a little bit. So that's the first tip when it comes to uh, trying to create uh, dynamic photos in dull conditions. Find color contrast and depth if possible. Another very good tip when it comes to creating dynamic photos in very dull sky conditions is to eliminate the sky. Just get rid of it completely. And this is something that you've probably heard of before. It is uh, preached quite often because it is good advice on, uh, on dull days, especially in like the winter or on rainy days or when, uh, you know, it's just not all that exciting up above us. And uh, a day like today is a good example. So it's a uh, good opportunity with this heather, and this really vibrant color and contrast between the green and the purple to uh, try and focus on a subject that's like relatively interesting and then just cut out the, uh, the sky completely. And uh, one sort of a quick example is these two birch trees, sort of like the peace symbol, just uh, going off out of the frame at the top side of the image. And uh, it's nothing too great, but it is slightly dynamic. And I think I'll be able to really uh, make those colors pop in post and make it look pretty good. And it is an example of cutting out the sky. All right, we are getting absolutely eaten alive out here right now. This is just about sunset and uh, there's tons of mosquitoes. It's crazy. I've never seen this many mosquitoes in Germany. See if you can see them buzzing around me in this piece of the camera. But uh, let's talk about photography because we got one more composition set up here. This is uh, really low to the ground with sort of this stump as the subject. And then you've got the, uh, the hills off in the background and a nice path leading off towards a crooked horizon, which is a bit annoying, but uh, a good example of how to create a dynamic image in dull conditions is to utilize your focal lengths and to go wide, especially uh, not as wide as the 12 to 24, but right now I'm at about just over 16 mil. I'd probably put it at about 18 millimeters with the 16 to 35 from Canon. And uh, I'm getting a pretty nice shot. I've had to focus stack uh, three times. So once on the front part of the stump here, then the middle part, and then way off into the background to try and get a, uh, a nice image that's uh, sharp throughout the frame. But uh, I think 
Utilizing your wide angle and putting a subject really close to the lens to get that dynamic sense of depth in your image is a very good way to create something uh, unique even in dull conditions. So get something in your foreground, you know, a prominent subject, and then utilize that to sort of be your anchor into the rest of the scene. And yeah, these mosquitoes are crazy, wow. All right, it's getting pretty late here. And uh, as you can see, the light still looks the exact same, but I am filming an S-Log3 right now and I've really boosted the ISO. I'm at like 4,000 right now, 1.8 aperture. But uh, this has been a pretty cool location. Uh, definitely challenging to try and get a, uh, a good composition. It looked like from the drone that we were in heaven, you know, like an absolute beautiful location, even with these dull conditions. But uh, still, I think I'm able to capture a couple of nice photos. The one with the uh, the color contrast and the subject of that small birch tree. And then, uh, you know, that handheld shot of the two birch trees with cutting out the sky and, uh, and nothing there. A couple of nice drone photos as well. The drone is always good for, for good angles and compositions. And then uh, that last one with the focus stacking and the mosquitoes and the wide angle. So a couple of tips there. I think the next video for me will probably be in Georgia to start the first ever hidden photo tours. And that's gonna be an awesome adventure. So you're in for a treat there. It's gonna be a lot of fun exploring Georgia with James Kerwin, a pro architecture photographer who's teamed up with me to help run the first ever hidden photo tour in Georgia. 11 people on that trip. It's gonna be absolutely incredible. So you got lots to look forward to there. And also, I've revamped my website. I just changed it yesterday and I've added all of the trips that I wanna try and do in 2024 and 2025. I'm trying to schedule my life because Nelly and my son Mateo are definitely taking priority and I need to figure out how I can work the trips into their schedules. And that's really important, obviously, for me and my family life and uh, for them as well. I wanna be there for my son, I wanna be there for my wife, and I need to make sure that uh, the next two years, you know, they're gonna be comfortable with the trips that I wanna do. So I think I've been able to do that but I would love to get your feedback on how it's looking and uh, if it's ease of use, the, like, you know, clicking around, how does it look, that kind of stuff would be uh, really, really nice. So yeah, I hope you liked it. Check out the webpage, let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video, which I hope will be from the country of Georgia.